Okay, welcome everybody to this week's CMC Markets Weekly Charting Analysis Webinar. My name is Jasper Lawler, I'm hosting today. We're just going to zip through this uh, risk warning that you see on the screen here. Okay, well, last week was literally one of the maddest markets I've seen in a while. There was some serious volatility going on and I hope some of you were able to, to participate there because, um, yeah, that was there were some big movements we saw. You don't see that kind of thing every week, uh, particularly in the currencies. And I, I think going into this week, it's going to be currencies that are going to be the focus again. Um, it's hard to imagine that kind of volatility can be repeated, but there's been a lot of calls for the closer we get to the FOMC, the Federal Reserve, tightening interest rates, the more volatility we're going to see in markets um, just because they've had such an impact on asset prices since they began their QE program. You know, the first stage hiking rates, second possible stage of um, selling off some of their uh, treasury holdings or, or mortgage-backed securities, it's going to have a pretty massive impact on markets. And, um, you know, that's why we saw the likes of, if we just jump over to the old euro chart here, <clears throat> why we saw this um, take place. I mean, this is the, the daily chart, and you can see um, started down here, sub-106, got as high up here as, as over um, 110. You know, it was close to a 500 pip daily range, um, and that's just a daily chart. If you look in today, you can see how how crazy it has been. And then, not only that, but then the next day, pretty much retraced almost all the gains down to the sort of breakout area here. You can see if I draw this line in on the euro chart, <clears throat> this is where we busted up, broke through, closed there, and then the next day just rallied straight up to. Um, to those peaks again, and at the moment it looks like we're, we're pushing up and making gains, and you know that's been my feeling um, as posted in the chart forum here <clears throat> over the past few days. That when you see something like that, um, it's not because it's not you know we had a bit of a long tail there, so understandable a bit of a dip. But um, if people are going to be, even though I think most people's outlook is still fairly dollar bullish, euro weakness. Um, given the divergence in monetary policies, when you see a move like that, that shakes a lot of people out of their positions. Um, and so unsurprising that we haven't even seen a, a test of the lows again. And we could see, move, you know, this is my line in the sand, which we've basically already kind of touched. So that's probably not much of a marker here. And I'd say we're pushing maybe further up towards this um, 113 mark could be where this is headed. Um, you know, it's, you, you're still sort of going against the longer-term trend here. You know, you remind ourselves, you look at this weekly chart, not exactly a, uh, a friendly place for, um, for bulls, but nonetheless, um, I actually posted this chart a while ago. Um, actually, now I've got the line altered on this chart for some reason, but actually, connect these two lows. Look at that. Um, that's not far off. All long wicks coming off this uh, this trend line. So, you know, there's a possibility here. We're certainly still in a downtrend, but we've seen a sharp reversal. Did correspond with that trend line. We actually pushed through this low back over here. Um, but uh, nonetheless, you know, if you look at the size of these declines, historically, you know, we're through that. And um, so chance of a turnaround here, but, uh, you know, we've, at the moment, we've got to be a bit cautious because really this trend is still down. You know, this is this is kind of the lower low, lower high, lower low. So, we're, you know, deep by default, we're expecting another lower high somewhere before that high to eventually roll over again if this trend is to continue. But some indications based on the volatility around the bottom here that maybe we won't. And for those unaware, Basically, the reason for this um, jump around in prices at the tail end of last week. And so we're looking at the euro chart here, but may as well look at the pound as well because it was pretty similar. You know, pretty, pretty massive. You know, nice, um, you know, nice uh, false break on on, um, on cable on retrospect because you had this low here. False break lower. A lot of people with sell stops underneath the low, push down, 
but then ended up closing above and obviously just rocketed all the way up. So, you know, um, hopefully some were able to benefit on breakouts above here, for example, pushing up to these the, these highs. But even if you weren't, there, you know, there was a couple of opportunities post that to um, to get in close to these lows again in the anticipation that there is going to be some follow through on this massive uh, false breakout. Um, so yeah, what was the what was the cause? Really, this uh, the Fed meeting last week. Um, you know, the um, the the FMC were just a lot more dovish than expected. They did take out the patient's language, as most people had foretold, um, but the the big change up, um, as we had actually highlighted in our in our commentary, was a, was a distinct possibility was that they actually scaled back their growth and, and inflation forecasts and kind of put the back the dots on their dot chart, implying where they think interest rates will be at certain periods in the future. Um, so sort of scaling back their interpretation of the economy that was interpreted as, as, uh, as dovish, and that's why we saw these massive moves in and around markets. So what to look for this week? Tomorrow is going to be pretty big, particularly for this pair that we've got on the, on the screen. Um, we've got both UK and US CPI data out to, coming out tomorrow. And obviously that's um, pretty, pretty, a pretty good day for comparing the outlooks uh, for the British pound and the US dollar. Um, you know, the dollar is the world reserve currency, so that tends to be the more dominating force. Uh, but nonetheless, we, you know, if we see some clear-cut difference here where um, inflation is uh, improving in the U.S., whereas it's not in uh, the U.K., or at a faster pace in the U.S. than it is in the U.K., then we can expect um, the, this, this, this general downcline to continue. Um, but I think we are – it probably would take quite a divergence of data – to, to undo some of the large moves that we've seen here. And I think we are likely going to at least push up to this towards this, this spike high, again, just to kind of test the uh, determination of um, bulls and bears up at that, that key level that, uh, that, that caused the big reversal back down here. So obviously this was massive because it caused that reversal up here, but equally this was massive because it caused the reversal right back down again. So that, that was just the remarkable thing about what happened. And again, this level kind of moved important. And, you know, this is the line in the sand down here at the moment, this 147.40. Looks like it's, it's holding pretty well. And so you'd imagine the next kind of key test, even though we've got these lows over here, which are kind of preventing the moves high at the moment, I think really this is the, the big one. Um, and so CPI data will be key. There's quite a lot of U.S. data this week. Um, so we've got durable goods following on Wednesday. And then fourth quarter GDP on, uh, on Friday, I think, is that the um, – could be the final revision. Final revision, yes, that's right. So um, actually expected to be revised slightly higher. Um, so that will not really, you know, so one thing to kind of look for here is um, how does the inflation and growth um, compare with what the Fed are forecasting? Because that's quite a favorable situation for um, U.S. stocks. Um, and if we flip over to, a, to the U.S. 30, for example, you can see that we've, um, this is the, the weekly chart, which I think is quite instructive at the moment. We've got this um, you know, this is kind of my highlighted breakout here. We've been looking at ever since we were up here. Didn't get through there. Now we've formed a bullish engulfing candlestick um, where this body is engulfed, this this body of this. You know, the low hasn't been engulfed, but the, the body has. So that's the definition needed by the Japanese. It's not an outside week as defined in um, Western bar graph techniques, but it is a bullish engulfing according to, West, uh, according to Japanese. So quite a strong pattern either way. And, uh, you know, that's, um, you know, this situation where the Fed are forecasting something quite dovish and so they're keeping interest rates low, but actually the real, in data, the real data is showing a better, better than forecast. So for the time being, that would be a positive because the economy is doing well, but the Fed are responding with kind of dovish um, policy. Eventually, if the data continues to improve, then I think that's going to be a negative for markets because the Fed may have to adjust their, um, you know, their commentary and uh, shift it to be a bit more hawkish and maybe start leaning towards a, a rate hike in um, June or September. 
but uh, very simply, you know, a rate hike is not too positive for uh, for stocks. Obviously, it looks like it's on the cards. We're still pushing into all-time highs, so it's not been devastating yet. But it's it's mostly the cause of these sell-offs is that is when it looks like that rate hike's getting closer than previously thought. Um, so if we do while we are on the uh, let's uh, let's stick with indices while we're on the US 30. Uh, if we drop down to the daily chart. So you saw we had that bullish engulfing, you know, that basically encompasses all of these moves up here on the weekly candle. Um, but at the moment, we've just bounced off this, um, just just shy, about 18.197 was the peak. But at this, basically bouncing off this 18.200 round number, just shy of um, the uh, the all-time highs here, we were formed in March. And obviously, that next round number target is just above, which is what we fell down from before at 18300 so not surprising to get a bit of a pullback from there in combination with these these peaks um, I think for the sort of bullish outlook to main, be maintained this is the previous swing high now we have kind of already tested that so that's what makes that potentially not as strong because we didn't just push way above that and come back to it which is the ideal for this um, previous high acting as then support so that will be the first consideration, but I think given that we've already busted through it, um, there is a possibility um, that we could drop down to this um, this low here and then um, maybe a false break below and then push up again. But, you know, if that bullish engulfing pattern is to, to hold any weight, then I think that would probably be a level that we need to hold. Also, something that I occasionally look for on the uh, the RSI here. You notice I've got an, an inverse head and shoulders pattern, something I mentioned on the um, on the chart forum prior to this big break higher. Um, you know, sometimes when the reversal in the prices doesn't look too clear, you know, look on the RSI and suddenly actually there was quite a nice little um, inverse head and shoulders, which we got a break above on this candle, and then we had the pullback on this candle. We held above the low. We've got this big spike down here and then pushed all the way up. And this obviously was the same day when U.S. stocks saw that massive volatility on Wednesday. was obviously the same Fed day that caused that volatility in the U.S. dollar. Now, I guess an index that we're all interested, particularly here in the U.K., in is, um, is the U.K. 100 as we, charge, uh, as we trade it. As you can see, we're above the the 7,000 mark. Um, we closed above there for the week and for the and for Friday last week, and uh, you know that makes marks quite a game changer. Noted in the uh, the chart forum today that we do have this um, rising trend line connecting these two peaks. It's not you know generally um, trend lines rising trend lines connecting peaks are not as significant, and particularly if we are seeing a trend acceleration here, it would just be a good indication once we break through it that we are getting that acceleration. At the moment, we're pulling off it a bit, but it hasn't even lasted too long. We're already bouncing back a bit off of um, you know, this, this peak here. So harder to see when we've got a strong trend on the daily chart, but maybe if we drop down to the four-hour chart, you can see this was the, um, the kind of like high, you know, high, 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 low, high high and then dropping down towards that and you can see that high is basically what we've bounced off here I've got my my line down here you know it's just a bit more conservative but we're, we're getting a strong bounce off here again sometimes lines on the RSI can be instructive so you can see that actually we've got a few touches on this rising trend line and we've got a breakout here so that just adds a bit of extra weight to this move above 7,000 um, if this trend line does prove to be significant, there may be a retouch of this this trend line before pushing higher. Could be another another place to um, get in along the market. Um, in terms of UK data, I mentioned the CPI. Uh, we also have retail fair, uh, retail sales on Thursday. <coughs> um, you know, retail sales have been fairly decent actually in the UK, somewhat supported by the. Uh, by lower oil prices, um, but what's been holding UK markets back a little bit is actually, although we've uh, that you you know we looked at that chart of the pound against the dollar, we saw the pound getting 
pounded, um, actually a bunch uh, against a weighted basket of currencies. The British pound's been pretty strong, and that's actually been hurting um, exports a little bit, and it's kind of been impacting the economy in general and uh, holding it back a little bit. But you know, should um, uh, you know, should there be a reversal of fortunes and the euro push higher a bit? that actually gives some scope for um, Euro-Pound to push higher a bit, and we've actually already seen some evidence of that. <clears throat> so quite a strong-looking reversal in Euro-Pound helps UK exporters a bit, and that has that has somewhat corresponded with this uh, break above 7,000 in, in the FTSE. Let me just show you that uh, Euro-Pound chart. So... You can see here that um, you know, what we're kind of, we've got that bullish engulfing again off the low. Then we've got a um, that so that was the that was the breakout area. We've got a push above, a test pushed above here, broke above that peak. So now suddenly the downtrend's losing strength a bit. We're turning into a bit of an uptrend. Push above. Um, this again, Wednesday, that what large ranging day, um, pushed up into the high up here, pulled back, test of that previous high again. So this is all characteristic of an uptrend, right? A high, 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 low, high, 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 low, with, without even dropping close to the lows. It's just coming off the, the peaks, which is the sign of a strong trend, and it's continuing at the moment. We had been closing below this, uh, you know, this um, the low from March 2nd. But it looks like today we're pushing above. And if we do get a close above this high up here, you know, that's definitely major progress in terms of the uh, the pound losing some of its strength against this um, weighted basket of currencies, which um, you know, should be good for um, the UK economy. And, um, and uh, you know, what's good for the economy should pass through to the consumer and be good for retail sales. We're not quite there yet, but this is something to keep in mind going forward. For those following individual stocks, um, big one is that we've got EasyJet earnings on Thursday. Um, another one to note is that um, flipping back around, well, let's, what should I do? I guess while we're on indices, let's have a quick look at the Germany 30, because that really has been the strongest performing dollar market index this year. If we just take a time to look at the, the the extent of this rally, it's been quite huge. You know, this was obviously the consolidation area that we'd be dealing with for a while. And then, you know, as QE was announced in January, or the expectation was that it would be announced, you know, boom, we've just gone up like two handles basically, up to peaking at around 12,000. And um, 11,000 didn't really make much of a dent. But this has been a really strong rally. We've got up past 12,000. We actually hit 12,220, I believe. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So we're getting a pullback from this 12,000 level, which, um, you know, a bit of an sort of indecisive candlestick here with um, basically sort of spinning top side pattern. Um, so not giving us too much of a clue either way. But it wouldn't be surprising if we've got a bit of a dip down maybe to the lows of these candlesticks. Um, I've got some lines drawn in here based on the, the daily chart. And so this is a sort of interim low, which has actually been kind of holding okay. Um, you can see this this range of this candlestick has kind of been what's been um, supporting us. And we got a push up. We didn't even get as far as 12,100, and we've actually rolled over since. So still holding for now, but I wouldn't be surprised if we got a dip down to a retest of the 21-day moving average and these, these peaks from, from back in the early part of March. Um, you know, this day has not closed yet, so don't don't fall for that mistake where you think this is a done deal because the candlestick looks as it is right now. But at the end of the day, that could be a tall wick, and we could be have a long green body up here with a higher close. Um, but for the, you know, if the day does close like this, you know, it's a bit weak, and you know, that one might be the first stage towards this move down here. Also, look at the RSI again. You can see our kind of a tr equivalent rising trend line. We do have one for price that works quite well, I think. Um, something along those lines that's not broken yet um, and again that's you know maybe we get a kind of what would be quite a nice pattern would be if it um, spiked down to these peaks and then closed above the line again um, that could be a good indication to um, 
get along the market again. But this, the fact that this, rise, that this rising trend line has been broken on the RSI suggests that we could be having a move down to there. And um, should we get a close below this line and the 21, it's quite a kind of confluence of support there. If we do get a close below that, um, you know, then we could be looking at, you know, a move lower. And um, we'll have to look for more opportunities along the market down here. Um, just got a quick, uh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to switch back to, to currencies now. I've got a request for uh, pound Swiss. I actually thought that was on my uh, watch list here, but I think I took it out. Um, let me just load that up. Now this term pound Swiss looks pretty, I haven't actually looked at this before, but it looks pretty similar to the dollar Swiss chart, where we basically have, you know, this, if we look at the weekly chart, you can see it better, this um, kind of support going through here, you know, this is where we were bouncing off, bouncing, bouncing, and bang, and now we've spiked through there, followed through, so, <clears throat> um, yeah, it looks pretty similar to the uh, dollar Swiss chart, and I did um, mention, I think last week on the dollar Swiss chart, let me just see if I can pull that up. You can see that's probably pretty similar. Yeah, even more extreme rebound here. And did I actually end up putting that in the chart forum? No, I did not. I think maybe I tweeted it. But uh, but yeah, you, you can see that um, Pound is, pounds is a bit more correlated with um, euro, so you know it's more kind of flat around the peg. The dollar is just um, moving higher um, in spite of that peg. But you can see that's where we crashed, and we've moved up to this kind of breakdown area. Um, so yeah, definitely an opportunity here. We've already moved down a bit, but um, plenty of room to the to the downside. Um, I don't quite know. How I would, I mean, we've, we've closed, uh, okay, let's move back to the pound again since that's what the question was on. Did I keep that chart? I didn't. Yeah, so I think that weekly chart is the uh, the instructive one. You have to be careful in these situations about not having, you know, don't sell at the lows just before the kind of pullback. <coughs> But uh, certainly if we kind of bounce, not certainly, but a possibility if we bounce back to uh, to here where we broke down there, that would certainly be an opportunity. But, you know, we may not ever get there, so that's, that's the risk. Um, if you do feel, you know, I'm not quite sure what the uh, inclination is here. Mark, the way I'm looking at this is this is a possible point in which we roll over the market lower rather than just your casual dip. Um, I don't... I don't necessarily see this as a buy the dip scenario um, in the, in the long term. We could definitely could get a push higher back up to this breakout area, um, but I would I'm you know I'd be pretty wary of this market. Hope that hope that helps. Um, we have had the. Um, the SMB saying recently that there is going to be no new floor put in the market, no new peg. So that's arguably um, pretty bullish, the Swiss franc. I've got about five minutes left here, so let's um, shift on over to commodities. <coughs> uh, for me, one I've just been really following up recently is copper, one of the bigger movers today. Um, got a nice old follow through on uh, on Friday. Um, so again, let's like quite a lot going on in this chart. So let's um, taper what we're going. So here, this is the weekly chart. This was the kind of um, where we made that big spike and then big reversal. So this was our kind of first clue that maybe there's some buying interest in and around this 250 level. Obviously, that's a big round number as well. Uh, 245 ended up being about the low. So we pushed down again. Could, you know, again, it was a sort of false break scenario where we had, and then we ended up with this kind of uh, spinning top, doji looking week, followed through, um, and so that was the kind of break there, 
according to me, um, of this kind of uh, downtrend type scenario. And you can see that kind of area did hold. We pushed up quite higher, got a big sell off, and then a sharp reversal higher. <coughs> Um, again, last week when um, we had the volatility surrounding the Fed, but a good push higher off the 260 level and this box that I had here. And now we're just, we, you know, the thing is, <clears throat> it's still, even though we sort of pushed above a couple of highs here, this, this peak here only had one lower week. It's not the most solid looking peak. So really this is the kind of um, more interesting peak up here. Um, even though it only has one to the left over here, obviously a lot to the right hand side. And then the big ones right up here. So we're still arguably in a bit of a kind of downtrend mode. So definitely possibility for some people coming in and selling the market and being this being the big kind of uh, trough down and up and then a sell off from around here. So then we've got this 61.8 as drawn from this high. It's arguable which high you draw it from. What I find sometimes useful is just the fact that this 50 level already worked quite well according to this peak, which implies that might be the one that people are watching. We're getting a bit of a sell off before this 61.8 at the moment. Now, commodities have all been a bit on a run, particularly the metals. If we look at silver, now I had this, um, I've been tracking this all along. This was the declining RSI trend line that was working quite well. That's the declining price trend line. And this is all fairly textbook. Um, <coughs> The the one thing that um, caught me out initially was that we had these lows here and we had a, a marginal close below this uh, 15.50. Where was that close? You look at the last price. Oh, it was actually 51.50. Yeah, 51. But um, these lows are slightly above 15.50. So then uh, that didn't follow through. Got a few kind of inside days. And then eventually that was the... You know, firstly that with the the bit of a break below and then the close above, kind of a or kind of small hammer pattern there. Then when we got the breakout through this high and above the rising trend line, you know that was when we started to know we were in business. <clears throat> Obviously, also corresponding with this candlestick, um, uh, sorry, with the breakout candlestick is when we moved above the RSI, so double confirmation, trend line, um, and the uh, the RSI trend line followed through the next day, closed above 16, and these lows over here. And then we just got that massive move on Friday right up to that previous peak. So there's not much in the way of support in this area, and that's why I think probably, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this is about as far down as we get. There's not going to be too many people with a strong candle like that wanting to sell from there. Only so far as that. I wouldn't be surprised if we push back on and uh, maybe make it up to this, this Feb 13 high up here closer to uh, 1750. Um, WTI I was looking at earlier and actually um, the chart I think is most useful on this and it's actually a bit of a kind of early look at um, what we've been seeing in the likes of copper and things. Where here this is the weekly chart you can see and um, here is the low and here we've had this folk, false break through the low and come back and closed above. So kind of uh, similar things that we saw that can cause those massive moves higher in, in copper and silver. Um, so, you know, the market's still lower. Uh, you know, it's still a downtrend effectively in, um, in oil, but we are facing a bit. And um, there's, there's a possibility that this gets a follow through higher up to, <coughs> see on the daily chart a bit better. This area of former support got broken, now could become resistance. Got a couple, they've got the two uh, moving averages as a confluence of resistance there as well. Uh, so we're going to get a push high to that uh, and possibly a push high to the, the top of the range around 54. So, you know, on the daily chart, you can't really, you know, there's a bit of nothing going on at the moment here in the daily chart, but we've got a, a close below the previous lows. Uh, if we draw that line a bit better here. Close below, then a bullish engulfing-ish kind of candle, and then just various sort of inside days, but not much decision going on. Can't really tell too much from that, only that the follow-through lower didn't really take much shape, but we haven't seen much to the upside either. But if we do look at this weekly chart, I think that tells us a bit more that we got that false breakthrough and then a close above. <clears throat> Uh, 
Um, so, you know, for uh, just briefly on the on whole price at the end here, um, it's uh, it's really um, we've we've seen some comments from the Saudis today. Um, so that's a lot of the kind of thing that can push markets around. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, basically saying they're not going to cut production. I think we can probably believe them at their word there. The Saudis, they, they maybe do want to cut production, but they don't want to do it by themselves. And the thing is, um, OPEC, even amongst all of them together, are not um, swing producers anymore. Um, Russia is producing a lot of oil, Venezuela is, and obviously the U.S. is. So... Um, um, until it's all kind of agreed amongst various countries, perhaps some of the South American and countries and Russia and OPEC all agreeing to cut production together, then um, I don't think it's, um, you know, I don't think the outlook for oil looks that good. But, you know, we've obviously come down massively, so at some point we're going to see some kind of sideways markets until there's further evidence of really increasing production. But uh, that U.S. inventories data on Wednesday is going to be uh, pretty big, as usual, for WTIN and probably for Brent. The, the rig count data on Friday is arguably not as important these days, um, just because the number of rigs have been falling. And eventually that will have an effect. But at the moment, U.S. production, as seen on the inventories data on Wednesday, has been increasing in spite of the falling number of U.S. oil rigs. Um, so, uh, so that's that's about it uh, for this week. Um, again, just uh, data-wise, um, today we've got Draghi's speech, uh, as well as a speech from Stanley Fisher, the vice um, vice president of the Fed. So, there's quite two big speeches happening on Monday, uh, happening today. Tomorrow is going to be about the inflation data in the UK and US. Wednesday, durable goods. Thursday, UK retail sales and. Um, and EasyJet earnings on Friday, the U.S. For, uh, fourth quarter GDP final release. Uh, so that's, that's some big things to be watching and should be some opportunities, especially following on from that volatility that we saw on Wednesday last week. So uh, good luck with the trading. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it's Jasper Lawler signing out.